Hi everyone, here's Paula and in this video I would like to present how I ozonate my water. And with this I will reveal the secrets to how I managed to look like I'm 43, although really I am 96 years old. So let's get the ozone party started. Let's look at the equipment first. Every ozone application starts with the oxygen source. And when it comes to ozonating water, I prefer using an oxygen concentrator over an oxygen tank. In this video, I will use a refurbished Respironix Everflow. The Respironix is a tried and tested oxygen concentrator, good quality, solid, reliable, and you can find great deals on eBay or Craigslist. Its only downside is that it only comes in blue, not pink. Also, it is not a low flow oxygen concentrator. And this is a real problem. But here's the solution. It is an external low flow regulator which gives me flows down to 1 16th of a liter per minute. This allows me to do all sorts of ozone applications which call for low flows like ozonating water. Next comes the ozone generator and here I use the Promolife Elite O3 dual cell. When ozonating water, the higher output of the double cell does come in handy. This generator is extremely silent, which is great if you want to do ozone without disturbing your neighbors while throwing your ozone party. Other great features are the printed output on top and it doesn't get very hot, which means that the ozone concentration it produces is relatively stable. I use the Promolife for a whole range of different ozone applications. Next thing you see is this little glass container. This is a trap. When ozonating liquids, what always happens is that some of the liquids tend to travel back through the tubing and eventually end up in the generator. This is especially problematic with oils. Once oil has entered your generator, it immediately turns into scrap. It is done, finished. You can basically toss it. A trap collects the liquids and protects the generator from damage. With water, it is less problematic than with oils, but can still present problems. So in general, one should avoid getting liquids inside the machine at all costs. Consequently, a trap is very important when dealing with liquids. Don't skimp on that. Last thing one can see here, this is the water bubbler itself. So this is where you actually pour the water in that you want to ozonate. And what I really appreciate about this particular one is its size. Also, ladies, when it comes to water bubblers, size does matter. This one holds up to 2 liters or 2,000 milliliters of water, which is a lot. If you're throwing an ozone party, this is the bubbler you need. It also has an attached destructor on top. This is the little black part. The destructor allows you to ozonate your water inside your home without being exposed to ozone. So those are the single parts of the setup. Now we need to connect them. One starts with the oxygen source and the tubing that you see here is connected to the oxygen concentrator and this is where the oxygen comes out of. I connect to the oxygen import on the low flow external regulator. Next, I take a smaller piece of tubing, also with fluid lock connectors, and I use this to connect the low flow regulator with the ozone generator. So I connect the oxygen outport on the low flow regulator with the oxygen import on the ozone generator. Next comes the trap. The trap goes between the ozone output of the ozone generator and the water bubbler. The trap has already some silicone tubing and some connectors attached to it. It is made in a way that it has one inlet and one outlet. It is important to connect it correctly, otherwise there will be no bubbles in the water. And no bubbles means no ozonated water, and that means no ozone party. And you don't want to be an ozone party pooper. So here I'll show you how to not be an ozone party pooper and how to connect the trap correctly. You attach the ozone generator with the inlet of the trap, and the outlet of the trap is connected with a water bubbler. Before I hook up the water bubbler though, I first add some water. I then close the bubbler with a silicone lid. The lid has a type of a straw, it is a Teflon straw. So what you do is you connect the outlet of the trap with that straw. This is where the ozone and oxygen gas will eventually come out of and produce bubbles in the water. And this is how the setup looks when everything is connected. 
If you're not an awesome party pooper, and I'm sure you're not, this is how it should look like. So now I can turn everything on, but before I do that, I make sure that the off valve on the external regulator is turned towards the regulator, as you can see in the video. Then I turn the oxygen concentrator on and I let it run for a good 10 minutes. The setting on the oxygen concentrator should be at 2 liters per minute. After the blue, not pink, concentrator has warmed up sufficiently and once it runs at full capacity I go to the external regulator and turn the off valve down. The oxygen now runs through the regulator. I can now go ahead and adjust the flow of oxygen further down. I set the flow at 1 8th of a liter per minute. Since at that flow I want to have the highest ozone concentration possible, what I do is I turn both knobs on the ozone generator to the max. According to the chart this will give me an ozone concentration of around 75 micrograms per milliliter. Just keep in mind that this is not the end concentration of the water itself because the water will retain only a certain amount of ozone. So the actual concentration of the water might be something like 40 or 50 micrograms per milliliter or possibly less. Once everything is connected correctly, one will see bubbles coming up in the water bubbler when the oxygen concentrator is turned on. And as we can see, ozone is running through the water. The amount of water in the video is around 1.2 liters. I ozonated this for around half an hour. I prefer to use refrigerated water because the colder the water is, the more ozone it can absorb. But of course it shouldn't be too cold, otherwise it is really difficult to drink. Now one can make such delicious drinks like ozonated distilled water, ozonated mineral water, ozonated reverse osmosis filtered water, or all the waters mixed together and ozonated. You can also freeze ozonated water and add ozonated ice cubes to your water. The possibilities are not endless, it's amazing! One thing to keep in mind is that distilled water holds more ozone than mineral water, but I have been actually using mineral water because I have been drinking a lot of it lately and I didn't want to run the risk of losing too many minerals. Once the water is done, you turn all the equipment off. This does not have to happen in any particular order. So here's my ozonated water and now when you're drinking what is important is that you hold your breath because uh, you have to keep in mind that there is ozone probably collecting on the surface of the water and you don't want to breathe it in. So what I do is I hold a deep breath and then I drink it. pretty good. So I'll finish drinking my water. I will actually finish this whole thing here, believe it or not. Um, and if you want to know where you can get the equipment, then you will find more information in the description below the video. Thank you for watching and if you have questions, if you have comments, just write them underneath the video. Thank you!